Hey guys, I'm going to talk about um, uh, quite a few things. If I get interrupted in this video, because I, I, I may get interrupted in this video, so if I do, then you know I've told you ahead of time. Um, I want to give you four spots, uh, biblical spots in the Bible that prove that Jesus is God. I was watching a video the other uh, day, and uh, it was, I don't know if you've ever watched um, Nicholas Bowling before, but I, I th that's someone who I would recommend to you, you know, like as a, as like a, a pure born again Christian. I was watching one of his videos, and he was talking about Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, because they don't believe that Jesus is God, and so the way he talks is so smoothly so just the way a, a proper person should be and there are so many videos with people being mean you know to others um, you know like street preachers it's just uh, just the nature of some people right this guy isn't like that and I'm gonna recommend him his name is Nicholas Bowling you can look up his uh, channel I recommend him <sighs> So the first one, let's take a look at the first one. Is Jesus God? So let's take a look at Isaiah 9. I'm going to read you Isaiah 9, and I hope it doesn't cut out. Okay. I'm just looking at an email. I have to look at this because I think there's someone downstairs. Someone's got, um, that's my, it's my candle business. Someone's got something screwed up. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, just don't worry about it. So the first one, Isaiah 9. And I'm just going to cut in. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But this is in Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this so you see that wonderful counselor and in, in capital letters in the Old Testament mighty God so unto for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given that's obviously Jesus so you'd think that'd be good enough right but for some people it isn't <clears throat> another part is in the book of Revelations, Revelation, when I th when John bows down to the angel, the angel says, "Don't bow down to me. You know, I am your I am your brother, right? I am your brethren. Only worship God." So just remember that, okay? And when Jesus died, and then the apostles had all seen Jesus appear except for Thomas they were all in a room together all of them and uh, other people like Mary and, and uh, I think there's a whole bunch of other people and their ha their house was shut because they were worried about the government and the Pharisees and stuff and Jesus appeared and what did Thomas say he said my Lord my God Right? He said that right there. Did Jesus refute Thomas not to worship him? No, because he's God. So that's number two. Pardon me a sec. Sorry, I got this thing going. There's there's someone uh, trying to pick up candles and they won't come to my door. I don't like I don't leave my apartment. I told them before a certain time. So I'm just trying to do this. Um, just give me a sec.
Ja. And the obvious one, like the one of the most obvious ones is John 1. Let's read John 1. So I'm kind of thrown off by this person. Like I can't, I can't do two things at once like this, right? Like I plan on making this. I would, like some people just don't understand some simple things. The eternal word. In the beginning was the Word, capital W-O-R-D, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What don't you understand about that? He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That's pretty good proof right there. He manifested in the flesh. God manifested in the flesh. Um, what was the other one? Oh yes, I'm going to look this up. I have to look exactly where it is. John 8, let's read, um, please follow to the end because I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to talk about some things that I want you to listen to. Um, where is it? Sorry, I got to go back here. It's a long chapter. Let's just start here. Then Jesus said to the Jews, unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Sorry, you know what? This is, uh, I want to turn it to the New King James Version. I'm reading, uh, I don't read the uh, King James Version anymore. That's how I learned was through that, but then I just found the New King James Version was the same thing virtually, the closest thing to it. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you're a Samaritan and you have a demon? Jesus answered, I don't have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I don't, I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. More surely I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall not, never see death. Then the Jews said to him, um, Now we know you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our, our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Why do you make, uh, who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It's my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I don't know him, I should be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he, he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you aren't yet 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. In capital letters, I am. And they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So what is he saying there? He's saying, I am God. So if you go back in the Old Testament, I am was who Moses was talking to in the burning bush. And um, one of the one of the first, sorry, I got to keep looking at my email. 
one of the first things that someone will say to you, like, and one of the reasons I, I started to make this was because I saw, you know, as I'm looking through um, videos to to comment on and stuff like that, I came across, um, you know, like I can break down Christianity in 30 seconds. And then they go to the verse talking about um, Jesus praying to his father. How can he pray to himself? Because they're, it's a triune head. It's three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But Jesus came manifested in the flesh, so he was fully human, fully God. He came here on earth, so he was here, so he could still pray to his father. Why couldn't he pray to his father? He voluntarily became manifested in the flesh. So, that's it for that. What else did I want to talk about? So, I'm thrown off by this because some people, I don't know, some people don't understand simple instructions, right? Um, no, that's not it. Where did I put that? Had a little piece of paper, pardon me. There it is. You know what I notice is happening right now? There's there's two things. One of them is that people are getting a lot of followers, I notice, and a lot of hits. I watched a video yesterday, two days ago, by a, by a woman, and and she said there's too many people making videos about you know, it's all about demons and exposing people. Yes, I believe in exposing people is right. But you don't make your whole channel about that because how are you going to glorify God, right? It's, it's, it's good to do it, but, you know, you have to throw God in there somewhere. And I notice people have many hundreds of thousands, if not a million followers, and all they're doing is talking about curses and demons. I just wanted to point that out, you know. It's good to it's good, it's good to do that. It's good to expose and it's good to show bad people. It is. But, you know, at some point you're going to have to talk about God. You should talk about God, but that's not what tends to to get people followers. And uh that's what I, all I wanted to say about that and uh there was a ministry I wanted to talk about, and then I wanted to do something to show you something. I feel kind of thrown off right now because, like, there's someone. And I wanted to talk I wanted to talk about a ministry that, um, and I will mention it by name, and uh, and I wanted to talk about can God heal mental trauma. And I, I don't want to be a person, I'm not the type of person who tries to hide how they're feeling. You know, I choose the things I want to talk about, but is it possible that God can heal mental trauma like CPTSD, PTSD, um, and other anxiety things you're going through? And I'll just quickly talk about what I'm going through. Um, give me a second here, a little break in my voice. I find that people, um, this is what I'm going through right now. I'm waiting for someone to, to pick up an, a candle order, right? And they don't call you. They're, they're afraid to call you these days. That's what it's like. They want to do everything electronically, and I understand that, right? But if there's something going wrong, if you can't even call me, like... Um, That's it. That's what I don't like about a lot of what's going on in society. So I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna put the link for this, but um, there's a ministry. It's called Last Days Ministry. Go ahead and look at it, 
And uh, I do believe in, in calling out darkness. And uh, this person has pretty close to, excuse me, 100,000 followers. So to me, um, it's worth exposing because there's 100,000 people who, let's just say 90% have not read the Bible, right? So they're fooled. And sometimes I go on the comments section and I write something like Julie Green, like this guy, I don't know his name. And I'll write something and I'll get a comment back from somebody. You can't write anything in this last day's ministry. If you like, write it in there, you'll find yourself that you can't comment for 24 hours. He'll report you. I don't know if it, I don't, I'm not going to call any names or anything, but, uh, but in other ones, I look at the comment section and everyone's falling in line. No one knows the, the test of the prophets of Deuteronomy. If what they say doesn't come to pass, then it's false. If, if they say 99 out of 100 things correct, they're false. These people are claiming to talk, to have God speak to them. I could show you a graph, okay, a circle of all the prophets and like a like a pie graph of how much Moses uh, Moses was talked to Ezekiel Daniel and it shows on a pie chart how much Moses by far you know and it was like David it was like 12 times Moses was like 238 these people are claiming to have this every day every video if something that doesn't come to pass then it's false so um, I just can't believe the way in which that they can lie right through their teeth the way they are. So what I'm going to do, and it's kind of making me a bit nervous because um, I'm, I'm like waiting for someone and they're not calling me. And, I, and, and I, it's like throwing me off. I'm going to do an act. I did an act. I said, uh, you can look back at my videos. I said, um... I feel convicted to, to tell this. I, if you go back and you look, I made two of them. And I was acting. And I was acting to show you how much people can be tricked. So when I look at this guy, and I made do a thing on this guy, because I don't think anyone has. Just listen to me for a second, okay? This is what it's like. So I made a comment on there one day. And when I made a comment, I had never been flagged for anything. It was like within a couple hours, uh, uh, YouTube was telling me I couldn't comment on anything for 24 hours. And I knew for sure it had to be that. It had to be because I, I said, you guys are being tricked. Is it a waste of time doing that? I don't think so. If someone looks at it and they turn away, right? I don't think so. So, I want to warn you, I want to warn you that there's people out there that know how to string stories together that could trick you all day long if you don't know your doctrines. So, just give me a sec. I'm going to think of something. Remember, I'm doing this with a lot of abdominal pain, so... I woke up this morning, and this is the way he does it. He's like, he's got to think of the next thing he's going to say, and he just kind of strings one thing to the next to the next. And I'm guessing after so long, he just digs his hole even further. So... Just, to, just picture that I, I turn this video on, okay? Guys, when I woke up this morning, I got out of my bed, I felt like there was like this energy that I'd never felt before. And no, it's not like, it's not like um, 
the energy that people talk about in the universe and all that. I just, all I knew was when I got up that I felt different. There was something different about this day. Usually I wake up with a lot of pain, but it was kind of different this time. And and all of a sudden, I felt my head buzzing. Like, you know, like, uh, there it is, pardon me a sec. Yeah, hello, you have to um, come up to my apartment. Yeah, I'm just wondering, did you take a package at the door? Did you take a package at the door? Oh, okay, please bring that uh, back. So 518. Sorry about that. And all of a sudden I heard a voice. You know, like the sound of like, um, like tinnitus. Because I'm sick, I get tinnitus because of my spinal disorder. That's just something I suffer with. But it was a more calming tinnitus. I don't know. I can't explain it. It didn't feel bad. And it was like tinnitus. It was like reverberating out of my ears. And like, like it was like Ezekiel. I can't explain it. It was like colors instead of sound waves. And um, all of a sudden the voice came in my head and this was the first time the first time that this had ever happened to me and it said Dave today you're going to speak everything you're going to speak everything in your mind and you're going to do what I tell you and you're going to do it just like the prophets and right then I had a feeling and it just stopped right then and I had a feeling of, like I was scared at first and I wondered like what's going on is this is this my sorry I got a guy coming I'm kind of screwed up but you get my point right I'm going to do another video like that to show you how much that can go wrong Not I mean like um, trick people but you get my point right I can keep going and going and going. And as long as I take like a break, say I say something, I'm making something up in my mind and I take a break, that gives me enough time to come up with something that doesn't even, give me a sec. Sorry about that, gotta wash my hands. I don't like interruptions, man, like when I'm doing videos. <laughs> Yeah, so, so yeah, what they do is they take a break, right? They'll, they'll say something like this. They'll say, and then all of a sudden the Lord was speaking to me, and, uh, and all I could see in front of me was, and they'll take a break, right? And they'll, they can do anything. They can pretend they're uncomfortable. They can pretend they have something wrong in their voice or something, and then, in that time, they're thinking of the next thing to say. And the next thing that they say, a lot of the time, has nothing to do with the previous thing they were saying. They're not connected. And that's how people lie to you. It's too bad because I wanted to do a good one. So... 
Here's the last thing I wanted to talk about. I didn't expect a video like this today. Um, you know, you're looking forward to doing something, all of a sudden it gets interrupted. Um, can you heal um, from mental trauma? Can you heal from mental trauma by reading scripture and following scripture? The answer is yes. I'm in front of you in a camera right now talking to you. I can talk to other people just like I'm talking to you right here. It's a lot harder to do when, um, I don't like saying this all the time, but when you have 13 different pain disorders and when you have a screwed up throat, that makes the social anxiety, you know, it makes it go up. You know, I had trauma throughout my life since I was 16 years old. And um, like I know right now, if I could get rid of this abdominal pain in my, just that, just my abdominal pains, I would be, I would just be, I think I'd be uh, normal, pretty normal. But those make me pretty uncomfortable around people because I have to keep moving. I have to keep, I can't begin to tell you the things I have to do, like, you know, if I'm ever around someone, I have to stop speaking for certain amounts of time because my throat, I have to keep moving. Or when I'm with someone, I don't want to move. Like, it can get pretty uh, pretty agitating, pretty irritating. And I've gone through a lot of stuff since I've been in this building. I found out, you know, all my different pain disorders and stuff. I got my diagnosis. So the the mental side of not knowing what those things is gone. It's gone. And that released me into, and this is what I'm going to say. I find it's better and refreshing to have someone who's willing to just tell you the truth and not give you any BS at all. I grew up and like I have autism. CPTSD and PTSD, along with other associated autism and mental health disorders. And um, although I was social with people, I wasn't all that great, though. And, uh, you know, I, I suffered panic attacks, anxiety attacks, all, all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I was into stuff like doing drugs and drinking, which really screwed up my anxiety. There's many times I have to pace, but I don't in this video. <clears throat> I went through a narcissistic relationship, although it was, I'd only seen this person a few times. Um, you know, I knew them for like two years, you know, a lot, you know, talking on the phone and messaging and stuff. And when that happened, and at the same time, I was putting my life together as that happened, and it kind of fell apart a bit for, for a bit. But that taught me a lot of stuff. And at the same time, I was reading scripture. And uh, so I've read scripture for a number of years now, enough studying every day, to know that the only thing that we can lean on truly is God. And God helped me get my pain disorder uh, diagnosis, like uh, so many of them. And the more I read scripture and the more I learned about the way people are, my boundaries going up and stuff like that. You know, trying not to be any bit, you know, of a people pleaser. I found the better I the better I get and like uh, yes it was God it was God who healed me it was God who who took away uh, any feelings of fear any of that and the only way to get to what I'm talking about is by reading scripture 
learning to be alone, learning to work with your hands. Like, I believe I'm more confident than probably 90% of people, despite this. I'm not the best with people, but I'm confident otherwise. And um, I'm not the worst with people either. It's just the things that I suffer with. It's hard to be around people with it. God can heal you. You know what? You saw my videos. You saw my videos of um, part one, two, three, and four of my testimony. You can go look back at that. And um, hey, listen, if God can heal me of that, I was, you know, in a bed, then I went to a, a cane, like totally bent over, like bent over. If you saw me, I was like this. To walking, to walking stronger, to mountain biking, like mountain biking as fast as anyone can mountain bike. To jogging, but I won't jog um, because I'll just, uh, it does set off pain flares in, in my, in one of my, my spinal disorder. But yes, the answer is yes. And it reminds me of um, Ezekiel, I forget, uh, it's Ezekiel 30 something that says, you know, um, son of man, you know, the dry bones one, right? Is anything too hard for the Lord? The Lord can do anything. He can heal you. But what you have to do is learn to be alone. Build your confidence through scripture. You're not going to. You're not going to learn it any other way but getting to know God through Scripture. One of the reasons I show you the, or I tell you of this ministry, the last day's ministry, go look it up. Just just go look at the, some of the things they're talking about. You can't know God any other way but by reading Scripture. Sure, yes, I'm sure there are cases. There are cases, yes, but those cases eventually push people towards reading Scripture. It's the only way, it's the only truth, and it's the only life to live. If I can be confident with four pain suicide diseases, kidney stones, gallbladder attacks, other abdominal disorders, uh, torn face, neck, shoulders, listen, you can do it too. All you have to do is read scripture and come to Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, God can do anything. God can heal you. CPTSD, PTSD, going through fear, looking behind your back, being hypervigilant all the time. If you read scripture, it will give you the confidence not to fear stuff. That's the answer. But you have to keep reading. The more I read, the more I learn about God, the more I look into the deep meanings of it and his character, the more I love him. And the more I love him, the more he helps me spiritually, mentally, all of that. I feel confident. And I don't need people's validation and stuff. You know, every person, most people, need some type of validation right from a partner from something like that but god is telling a lot of us that we don't have to do that we don't have to please people in any ways but it doesn't mean we can't we're not going to be good and do good things to others anyways thanks for watching this video it's kind of screwed up because of because of uh uh that candle thing so I don't know, it throws off my mind. I have autism, so if uh, if you have autism yourself, you'll know that it's hard to uh, focus on one thing when there's another thing, like someone coming or something like that. It is pretty hard. I know how to multitask, but uh, when it comes to like someone's coming right there, it makes it hard for me. So God can heal you, and I promise you he can. All you have to do is trust in him. God bless you all. Oh, I got a video... It's going to be a commentary coming tonight. It's a long one. I found one. I, I don't think anyone's done this one. It's amazing. Um, pay, pay attention. I'll do it. It's coming later, like in the, in the early morning, but it's coming.